Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a great day. Guys, our Warzone DLSS video is doing phenomenal. We've almost got 10,000 views. So hit the pause button real quick. Hit the link in the top right. Go check out that video because we tested the DLSS with the 5900X and the RTX 3070. And we saw some pretty impressive performance improvement when we go through all of the different resolutions and all the different DLSS options. However, I have seen a lot of you guys' comments and have been interacting with y'all over there that there's still some confusion as to what settings you should be using and there's actually a little bit of drama going on with some other YouTube videos and I wanted to address some of those topics in today's video as we continue our deep dive into DLSS inside of Warzone. So the first comment that I want to address is how I'm actually testing my hardware today. So I test a bunch of hardware here on the channel. We do CPUs, processors, motherboards, all sorts of different types of combinations. And in order to expedite my testing, I need a fast, reliable, and repeatable way to test different games. And I picked the single player Piccadilly map because it has a lot of long range, short range, indoor, outdoor, and lots of chaos and AI running around, which is actually pretty similar gameplay as you would expect from Call of Duty Warzone. But as I saw in the comments, a lot of y'all were saying, well, Turk, it's not apples to apples. It's not the same. And I think that's a great point. So in today's video, we're only going to be looking at Warzone results. And I've actually created a new test bench loop where we drop in at the park location and we go kind of through a time trial loop through the downtown area in order to hit some GPU limited locations, CPU limited locations, and kind of get a good average of what it would expect to be in a Call of Duty Warzone map. Of course, Warzone is Warzone, so you get targeted with uh, different bounties and you get killed a lot during the runs. So in order to collect all this data, it takes me significantly longer to get the data. So guys, if you like what you're about to see, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. So I went ahead and retested my 5900X and my RTX 3070 at 1440p with this new benchmarking loop. And I actually saw some pretty similar results as to what we saw with the Piccadilly map. Now with the no DLS option turned on, I actually gained 11 FPS when compared to Piccadilly, but as we turned on the DLSS options, I did in fact start to lose a little bit of frame rate. With the quality option engaged, I lost 9 FPS. Balanced option, I lost 8 FPS. And with performance mode, I lost 11 FPS. Now, that might seem like a really big loss, but again, as we turned on those uh, DLSS options, our output uh, frame rate actually increased quite a bit. So the percentage change wasn't as drastic as what these numbers show. However, ultra performance is where we hit, hit the most performance lost, and that's actually going to be a loss of 30 FPS, or 14%. And that kind of starts to shine a little light towards, <laughs> see what I did there? Shine a little bit of light towards what we're gonna be seeing with the rest of our video. Again, the performance, in my opinion, was pretty similar to Piccadilly, but for the rest of the charts in the today's video, I will be using strictly Warzone collected data. Now, it comes to my attention that there's quite a few videos out there talking about uh, Warzone's DLSS integration and how it actually isn't that helpful when it comes to increasing your frame rates. Now, the video in question here is actually from Frame Chasers, and I'll post a link up at the top right. And I actually thought it was a pretty good video. He had a pretty good analysis of what the frame rate looks like at different scenarios in the map. And he goes through a bunch of different applications of where DLSS and sharpening and other things could be beneficial, but I don't exactly come to the same conclusions of what he was suggesting, but I wanted to use that kind of as a framework into more of the analysis we're going to do in today's video. And it highlights a couple different questions that I would like to answer, and that is, what kind of processors do you really need in order to engage DLSS successfully, and what kind of GPUs you should expect DLSS to really help? Because with an RTX 3070, one could argue you don't need DLSS turned on, there's plenty of GPUs out on the market that could benefit from DLSS. So Frame Tracer suggested that there's plenty of opportunity here to hit CPU limited scenarios, and I wanted to see what kind of CPUs could actually get past these CPU limited scenarios in order to engage DLSS. So I've got old Zen 1 processors, I got some Zen 2 processors, and I've even got this new RTX 2060 gaming laptop that I'm gonna be throwing at our benchmark suite today. 
So let's start off with the Zen 1 first generation AMD Ryzen processors. Now I've got access to a 1600X and a 1700X, which is a six core and eight core part respectively. Now, back in the days of old, Zen 1 had a really hard problem with actually hitting those advertised boost clocks. And in today's testing, we actually saw that the 30 or the 1600X was hitting right around 3.6 to 3.7 gigahertz, whereas the 1700X was hitting 3.4 to 3.5 gigahertz. So we're definitely pushing the bottom end of the spectrum when it comes to CPU performance. So let's start off and see how the 1600X performs. And sure enough, with the 1600X at 1080p, we only see a one FPS improvement as we go up to the higher DLSS setting. And at 1440p, we do drop five frames when going uh, the no DLSS and ultra performance, again, doesn't see any performance improvement. Now this does confirm uh, what Frame Tracer said in his video, but it also suggests that six cores is just not gonna be enough in going into the future. Now the 1700X at 1080p, it sees a similar no improvement when we go with the different DLSS options, but here's the kicker guys, with 1440p, no DLSS, we get 98 FPS, and then going to ultra performance, we see 114 FPS. That is fantastic news, and it goes to show that with more cores, we are able to get past uh, the, the CPU bottlenecking in this particular test. However, as we go through the different performance settings with uh, the DLSS options, we do see reductions in frame rate and we quickly come back to that no DLSS setting, which, you know, it is an improvement. It's better than the 1600X, but it's not as optimistic as what we reported in our 5900X video. A lot of gamers picked up some of the Zen 2 processors and that's the 3600 and the 3700X. So let's see how Call of Duty Warzone performs with DLSS options with those particular chips. The 3600 is actually one of the better value-based processors that's been recommended on the internet but unfortunately here guys we do continue to see CPU limited performance uh, at 1080p with 130 FPS going right out of the gate but we do see at 1440p eh, we're still CPU limited here all right now looking at the 3700x this is an eight core part I believe it boosts up to 4.2 or something I'll put a uh, note down here on the below at the bottom of the screen and sure enough at 1080p again we don't see uh, much comparison between the no DLSS and the ultra performance preset, but when we use quality balanced or performance mode, we do see frame rate improvements. Granted, they're pretty unstable, which does suggest that we are in fact still CPU limited in this particular test loop. But when we go up to 1440p, we start to see things stabilize, which suggests that guys, we are starting to shift from that CPU limited scenario into a more GPU limited scenario. And that suggests that if we engaged PBO or any other types of overclocking going on, we could in fact leverage DLSS quite a bit. <laughs> so it sounds like DLSS is a non-starter if you've got an older processor, a six core processor. Well, I don't really like that conclusion because there are plenty of alternate rendering methods that can use DLSS in order to improve your frame rate as well as increase your visual capability. Now looking back at the Frame Chasers video, he uses a 1080p output resolution and utilizes the rendered resolution in order to increase his visual fidelity. And it looks like a lot of y'all mentioned that in the comments section of my video as well. So I wanted to do a, you know, apples to apples comparison of native rendering methods versus the DLSS rendering methods. Now that's where things start to get a little bit tricky because it's pretty straightforward. You got a 1080p output resolution, you have a 4K render resolution, your GPU is gonna be doing what 4K is doing, right? When you're talking native resolution. But with DLSS, if you have a 1080p output resolution and a 4K render resolution, once you engage DLSS, you're actually using some other rendered resolution in order to create that 4K render. Again, that's really confusing, but I did provide all of these different videos and we're gonna go through them step by step and show you guys what the performance impacts are between native scaling and DLSS scaling. Now for the native resolution scalings, I needed to pick four different output resolutions that kind of mimic what DLSS is trying to do. So for ultra performance, we're using 720p as our rendered resolution. For performance mode, we're using 1080p. Now there's not a lot of information or definition towards the balance setting, but the best that I found was 1252p. And of course, for quality, we're gonna be using 1440p as our render resolution. Let's take a look at the performance real quick. So for 1080p with a 4K render resolution, we are hammering our GPU and getting 80 FPS on average. 
but when we change it to ultra performance or 720p native render resolution, we see an impressive 135 FPS coming from the output. But here is the fascinating finding, guys. As we increase our rendered resolution, we are seeing improved FPS performance, and that's because we are no longer CPU bound at that 720p render resolution. We're shifting towards higher render resolutions, which lean more heavily on the GPU to produce the frames, and thus giving us better performance, which seems kind of counterintuitive, right? But the numbers aren't lying here, guys, and as we get up to, I think that's the balanced setting at 1252p, we actually hit that uh, climax of 142 FPS, but unfortunately, since we're using the native rendering scaling here, we do see that FPS start to drop with 1440p and ultimately at the 4K resolution. And I will admit, guys, the raw 1080p 4K render does look pretty dang good. So does DLSS do a better job of doing upscaling as opposed to Call of Duty's engine performing the same task? Well, it goes to show you that actually DLSS performs 10% faster than the native resolutions, and we get to see actually pretty decent scaling all the way up to the quality preset. And in my opinion, the quality looks significantly better than the native resolution. Again, we're starting to see the CPU bottleneck shifting from the ultra performance preset all the way up to the quality preset, because at DLSS at that level, we are rendering at that higher resolution. So we get to leverage even more of our GPU while getting the CPU out of the way. Now let's talk quality really quick. Ultra performance, honestly guys, looks like hot garbage. I do not recommend you guys use that setting. So guys, I wouldn't even consider ultra performance for a setting in this game. And to put it even further, performance, it still looks pretty bad. I know Frame Chasers was really concerned with uh, motion blur with the different settings. Performance mode definitely reinforces that uh, conclusion he came to, so I wouldn't suggest that either. Now, balanced seems a little bit decent, but it is starting to uh, get a little bit of graphical issues going on right there and I still recommend that quality preset. And it does look like it addresses some of the blur that was being noticed in the native re render resolution, but we do in fact get the improved frame rate from DLSS being engaged. All right, so we've covered where DLSS isn't good, and we've covered that DLSS used in a different method might actually be beneficial, but let's look at the best case use case for DLSS and that's with gaming laptops. So for today's video, I've borrowed my friend's Aorus 15G KB laptop. It's got a Intel 10750 mobile part in it. I've got it listed in the chart here, as well as an RTX 2060 mobile processor. Now in last week's video, I said, guys, I really wish I had a 2060 because this would be a great situation for it. And this, this graphics card is even worse than those other 2060s. So hopefully we do see some pretty good performance when it comes to DLSS because We've got a pretty decent processor, and we've got a really bad graphics card, so let's see what DLSS has to show. So for no DLSS on this 1080p laptop panel, we are able to get 82 FPS on average with 57 FPS on the 1% lows. But guys, this is why DLSS is so awesome. Going into the quality preset on DLSS, we're able to gain an additional 20 FPS while only sacrificing just a little bit when it comes to graphical quality. And to be honest, on this type of gameplay monitor, I'm able to uh, leverage the high refresh rates. It's a 240 hertz panel. So I'm able to actually leverage that frame rate increases even better. So if you've got an even older laptop or if you've got uh, a, a lower end panel than what I've got behind here, this is gonna be even better. You can get a locked 60 FPS performance throughout the game. And to reinforce my previous video, we see excellent resolution scaling across the board with this RTX 2060 mobile product. So what all did we learn about Warzone with DLSS engaged? I still think that DLSS inside of Warzone is a pretty playable option, but there are quite a few caveats to keep in mind there. Now with Call of Duty in general, the more cores you have or the faster CPU you have, the better chance you are going to have with uh, bypassing some of these CPU bottlenecking scenarios. And we saw several different instances of that throughout the older generation of AMD processors. I actually did a couple different tests with my 11900K and I'm still hitting some scenarios where the CPU is bottlenecked to some certain extent. So, you know, definitely leverage uh, higher end processors, try and engage like precision boost overdrive or bi-core overclocking. Do whatever you can in order to optimize your processor's performance. 
And on top of that, this DLSS performance, it varies across the map. And that, and Frame Tracers did a good job of highlighting that because I think he was in the farm area. He was able to see that FPS improvement. So, you know, it all depends on what your gameplay scenario looks like. In our particular test run, we are definitely pushing the CPU limited uh, scenarios of the game. So if you're not always in the downtown area, maybe you're more in a lighter area, like around train yard or whatever, uh, you might be getting a different playing experience. And lastly, you're definitely going to be benefiting most from DLSS when you're in those GPU limited scenarios. As for graphical quality, I'm still leaning on going towards the quality preset when it comes to DLSS. Uh, I, balanced is okay, but I'm definitely thinking that performance is going to be the sweet spot when it comes to increasing your frame rate, as well as decreasing the motion blur and that perceived, you know, fuzziness that you might be seeing from some of the other settings. We also showed that with different optimizations and different rendering techniques, you could probably optimize your experience to tailor your particular rig. So, you know, take my examples as kind of like a, uh, a benchmark as to what it can do, and then apply that learning to your experience. Test your settings, uh, ask people what they use, and try to see if you can optimize your setup for your particular computer. But that's the video, guys. That's Call of Duty Warzone DLSS Deep Dive. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If I missed something or if I need to talk about anything more in depth, let me know down in the comments. Again, hit the like, subscribe, and also share this video because, you know, I, I have no ill feelings towards Frame Chasers. You know, I can disagree with some of the conclusions he came to, but he did make a good video, so I, I highly recommend going and checking out his video. Good stuff. But again, guys, that's it. Check me out on Twitter, at the Turk, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.